This is the short version of a, a longer video that turned into a 40 minute video and then wouldn't upload properly. So I'm going to try and upload that video still. But this is the very abbreviated short version that will let you get on with other things like watching other videos. Um, so it's about these filament LEDs that are used in a new style of LED lamp where they emulate the filaments inside with LEDs. And uh, I was first came across these when a, a friend contacted me and said, have you any idea if these are any good or if they work? And I couldn't work out how they did it. I, I, I didn't know what was in these. And they were quite expensive, the original lamps. Then they got mass copied, as they do. And Electron Update, another YouTube channel, uh, the chap in that took one to bits and he found that his were glass plates seemingly inside with the LEDs deposited on them in a series array. And latterly, Julian Illett um, found a source online of the loose filaments that you can just buy on eBay. And these are from a supplier called Each Desk. And they're not that expensive. Uh, four of them cost £1.59, including shipping. So that's about 2 or $3. Uh, that's about $2, say, for these, including shipping. Um, it's interesting to note that the uh, pictures say dip bid, the seller is each desk, and if you look at the paperwork elsewhere, it also alludes to being buy-in coins, who are all uh, big Chinese sellers. So I don't know if they've been ripping each other's pictures off or if they're all connected. But anyway, here we have it. So I noticed that the voltage in these is about 60 volts, and they're cylindrical with a little flat wire coming out the end of each, and they're rated at 15 milliamps. Um, so I cobbled up a power supply, and I'll just do a quick sketch what I did. There's live, there's neutral. I put a 100 nanofarad, 400 volt capacitor, and put a 1 meg ohm discharge resistor across it, so I don't get tingles. AC, AC, there's a bridge rectifier, plus, Minus, and then in the neutral side I just put a 1K resistor. And what this is going to do, it's going to create a very low, um, it's going to create a very low current power supply. In reality it drove these, it drove one of these at about 70 volts at 5.5 um, milliamps, so roughly 0.4 watt. Which is very good actually, because it means it's about half the rating of, of what this is, and it's actually pretty close. Um, for, as far as I'm concerned, it's preferable to drive it slightly lower. So the thing is just connected across like that with the positive end and the negative end. Okay, so that's the theory. I'll show you the actual result. I made the rectifier up with discrete components. Here it is. Um, just uh, discrete 1N4007 diodes. There's a capacitor with the discharge resistor across it. There's the 1K resistor, and there's one of the LED filaments. So I'll just plug that into the mains, and you'll see it's not bad. You'll see a bit of flicker until the uh, camera decides it's uh, going to compensate for that. If it decides it's good, there it goes. Um, and to the naked eye, there's not flicker. It's actually very good. Now, one side is noticeably yellower than the other. Um, so this side's yellowish, and this side's a warmer, say, a slight hint towards the blue uh, end of the spectrum. But it is, overall, it's warm white. So let's um, see what happens when I stick another filament, and I'm just going to do it with my fingers, actually. This is not recommended, so let's see, where's the positive end? Let's see if I can get the wrong way around and blow it up. I think that's the positive end. So you can hook them as two LEDs. Have I got that right way around or have I just... No, there it goes. You can hook them across as two LEDs in parallel, but if you actually hook, I had three in parallel, and the voltage was slightly different across them, so uh, one was brighter than the others, and, you know, it, it wasn't a perfect match. But, and I'm going to unplug this now, you can, quite pleasingly, you can hook them up in series. So I'm going to make this like a sort of V filament. I wouldn't recommend <coughs> heating them up too much with the soldier iron in case it shortens the, you know, it damages them because I think they're designed just to be crimped together. So I'm going to solder, uh, that's the positive, where's the positive on this one? 
that's the positive, so that's coming from the positive, so I'm going to solder that onto there to make a wee V filament. And I've got to solder that onto the wires. So now I've got uh, two in series, which will probably have a forward voltage around about 140 volts. And that should make a nice sort of V shaped filament. You may notice, I'm not sure if you'll notice, but I've actually put one back to front and uh, in terms of the, the light emitting side to the other side, and this one's light emitting side is this side, but um, it doesn't show that much. So, um, yes, neat, very neat. I like these a lot. And I had three in series, I would have had four, but I got a duffer, one that just wouldn't work out the packet. And the reason for that is that I noticed when Julian Illett got his, that uh, they just randomly came, just shoved in a packet, and one of them came bent like this, and uh, I don't think it's best that they actually get bent quite as far as this. Let's actually connect this one up, in fact. Let's uh, hook it in series. It was a wee bit flickery on and off, so let's um, see if we can get it to light. So I'll tack this one in series with the others. Well, it'd be quite amusing being able to bend them. I don't think it's actually recommended. Not sure how well attacked that is. Uh, I'm being very cautious about not uh, applying too much heat to the ends. So that's all three of those ones in the series. Let's plug it in. All oh, right, that works. Uh huh. And produces quite an interesting effect. Oh, that's actually more reliable than it was before now. Oh uh, well, maybe they do like being bent. I don't really think so. But um, I'll show you the construction because I did actually um, take one of them to bits completely. This is the remnants of it here, well and truly shredded. Oh, well, I'll show you it. Now. I'll get it up as close as I can to the camera. It can still focus. Um, and you'll see it's a flat metal strip with a wee insulator at one end. So I'll do a wee sketch of what I found was inside. This really is the super abbreviated version of the full video, which involved a lot of exploration. So, there's a thin metal strip. There's a little insulator at one end that the strip is pushed into. And the strip goes in like that into the insulator, just for support. And then at the other end is the other strip. And this whole thing is covered in a sort of uh, silicon rubber gel. There's an indent into this strip, because this is the positive end, and this is the negative end. There's an indent in to allow the attachment of a wire, and there are chips mounted all the way along here. 28 chips, I think it is. So lots of chips mounted along the... Um, not this size, obviously. This is totally scaled up out of proportion. So a wire seems to come out from there onto the first chip, bounces onto the second, third, and it just keeps bouncing along the chips. And then presumably just bonds on there. And that way all those LEDs are in series. Now, if you look at the strip from the side, it's actually got a series of square holes along it. I'm not sure if this is purely to encourage the bend, the forming of the um, the rubber over the. Uh, I don't know if it's to hold the rubber on in place, the sort of the uh, phosphor coated, uh, the phosphor infused rubber, but the LEDs are positioned in between those, with the little wires, the little dots, one at each corner, I think, or actually come to think that they might actually be in the middle. But these are just holes straight through the strip. That might also help with the flexibility, I'm not 100% sure, though you don't really want it to flex. And then the wires actually jump over those holes. Another possibility for the holes is possibly to allow the light to actually uh, bounce and reflect and travel through into the phosphor at this side, because it is relying on the LEDs on one side lighting the phosphor on the other, and that's why there's a difference in intensity. So that's fundamentally construction. It's quite neat, uh, I have to say. It's, it's very miniature, and, and they seem actually quite robust. Um, let me see, is there anything worth mentioning? Yes, there is. If you get some of these strips, you'll notice that um, 
one end has a little um, a little red dot in it to indicate that it's a positive. As soon as you solder it, that red dot just pretty much vanishes and then you don't know the polarity. So here's a little tip. If you look very carefully at the end, you'll see inside, you'll see the little white insulator making it look very obviously lighter um, than the other end. I mean, it's not very big, the, the little white insulator at the end, but um, it's enough that you can actually see the difference in, in intensity inside. And that is the positive end with the little um, little discoloration there. So um, all in all, quite nice little LEDs. Uh, I'm going to get some more of those because they're very good. And there is a full video and I'll try and upload it. It's up to you if you want to watch it. It's long. It's 40 minutes and it just goes in detail. You see the building of the whole circuit and everything like that and the configuration of the LEDs in different um, forms and me completely screwing up as well. So um, it's up to you if you want to watch it, but it is 40 minutes long. So if it uploads, it's entirely up to you if you watch that version. But this pretty much covers everything that you needed to know anyway about these things. So that's that.